ago? Like, when did you take that step to bring on employees, build a studio, build an office like this? When, when did this all happen for you? And, and well, I started this company 21 years ago. Oh. I was uh, working at a car dealership, training salespeople. I was pretty good at it. I could take people out of Burger King, turn them into 10, 15 grand a month producers. Nice. Uh, there was a minimum wage worker in the back, Mexican dude. And uh, I brought him up front, showed him how to sell cars, close deals. And uh, it changed his life. I watched his whole family change. And I thought, I thought to myself, man, I want to do this for a living. So I quit my job and started a training company. Well, when I went out on the road to train people, I couldn't get the same effect. And so I couldn't figure out why. So I did a little research and realized that when you train people effectively, Okay, there needs to be four key ingredients, good content, repetition, practice, and accountability. And I went out on the road, started my own business, and all I was delivering was the good content. And I thought then, that's all I needed. But once I realized my error, I, I didn't want to live on the road. I couldn't deliver the repetition. I couldn't stay at these places forever. Otherwise, I was just work there. So I invented a interactive training technology in my head, and then found people that could build it, built it, and then it started working really well. And then I started running into competition where they were using other big name trainers. So I just thought, you know, they're having the same problem I did. So I just decided to basically close them on using my software. Interesting. So I'm the guy that closes the guy that teaches you to close. Wow. That's very early. So 4.30 AM and, and give me a little bit of what that looks like that morning. Uh, at well, I just naturally wake up at 4.30. First thing I do is I've trained my brain to appreciate the simplest thing, which is life. So it sounds cliche, but I wake up and the first thing I think about is I get another day. So I, I use an analogy and it makes people understand what I'm talking about. If I just handed you 10 million cash, would you be excited? Would you be enthusiastic? Would you feel pumped up for the day, maybe the week, maybe the year? Yeah. You know, you'd be really happy about life. Well, if I said, I'll give you 10 million, but you can't wake up tomorrow, would you take it? Of course not. Nobody would. Well, think about that. You wake up tomorrow morning, bro. That's worth more than $10 million, but you don't act like it when you wake up. Right. We Most don't, people don't, right? we don't, we, yeah. we, we wake up and we worry about this and think about that. And we live in the past or the future. And you know, both of it's, you know, I trained my brain to be grateful that I just got another day. So I call it the million dollar morning because waking up is worth more than a million dollars. So I wake up and the first thing I think about and get excited about is, wow, you know, I get another day. So I, it throws a smile on my face and it shifts my perspective to think about shit positively. You know, now I get up and I focus on four key areas. Number one, I go work out, right? Because if you don't have your health, dude, trust me, money's got nothing right. on health. So I go work out, make sure that you know I'm, I stay somewhat healthy. Then I focus on relationships because I believe relationships are the new economy. I'll just write down five or ten people that I'm going to touch base throughout the day with, just to say hello, how you doing? Can I help you? What's happening? You know, just touch base. You ever see those people that every time they call, they want something? You you, you avoid those people. So, so I don't want to be that guy. So I reach out, I touch base with, you know, five or 10 people I'm looking to build a relationship with or improve one. And then I, um, uh, write down five things that will drive revenue for today, today. So before I go to bed, these five things I'm going to knock out before I go to bed, right. five that drive revenue because money's more important than people think. And then I open up a book or turn on a audible and, and learn something. See, because people don't understand, man. You got to understand. You're getting what you're getting because you're doing what you're doing. Make sense? And, and you're doing what you're doing because you believe what you believe. Your, your beliefs literally determine your actions and your choices and your mindset. So your beliefs are what cause your actions. Your actions are what cause your results. So if you're getting what you're getting because you're doing what you're doing and you're doing what you're doing because you believe what you believe. Well, then how do you change those beliefs so you can change those actions and change those results? The only way to change your beliefs is to get new information. 
and there's books and audibles and, you know, there's so much information out there, but we don't intentionally seek it on a daily basis. So every morning I intentionally consume, you know, 30 minutes minimum of new information, a book, podcast, a freaking you know, YouTube video. Uh, it doesn't matter, but I'm seeking information every day. So I call that the million dollar morning. I wake up realizing that it's more, it's worth more than a million dollars. That puts my perspective into an optimistic, you know, mindset. I work out, I focus on a few relationships. I determine what I need to do to, to drive revenue. And then I freaking learn something new. Keyword being new. How have you been able to balance family with success and, and growing? Well, I haven't really. Um, you know, you have them and that's that. And then you deal with it. <laughs> but, but ultimately, they're spread out. So when I was in high school, I heard, this, I heard about this thing called sex. I figured I'd give it a shot. High school, that's a little late. Yeah, and boom, had a kid. Okay. Stayed away from it for about a year and a half and thought I'd try it again. Boom, another kid. Okay. So by 19, I had two. Wow. Now, after I, I, I got married, you know, at 20, I forget, maybe two, um, obviously those two were from two different women back in the town that I lived in. So they kind of got raised by their moms and I just, you know, where, where was that? Visited. What, what city? Where, where'd you grow up? Oregon. On oh, Oregon. Yeah. So I did, I can't claim that I raised them cause I didn't, I mean, I, you know, paid, but, but it right. wasn't really that bright. Um, you know, we all make mistakes. So, so anyway, got married, had two more and then, uh, divorced and got married and now have three more. So it's seven kids from four women. Okay. Now I didn't sit there and, you know, change diapers and be this Mr. Dad the whole time. I made mistakes on the first set. I made mistakes on the second set. The third set I'm doing a lot better. But we all make mistakes. And I don't think you can, you know, balance everything. You just have to prioritize. You know, I think sometimes I'll work for two weeks straight because the business needs it and the, the family's fine. And then sometimes I'll spend a week and a half, 10 days directly focused on the family because they need it and the mm -hmm. business is fine. So you just juggle, you know. I don't think there's any, you know, formula. But what I would say is remember that you're not going to ever get back lost time you can find lost money but you can't find lost time so birthdays you know soccer games you know first events you know you don't want to miss those right. so so you just you just take a break it's they, they don't they don't last that long i do know you know you have to have some confidence because again like you don't have to be rude just because you're confident you know what i mean you, right. you can still be kind and everything else but so many people don't do anything where it puts them out in the public because they're worried about what other people think. You know, what if these people don't like me? What if my friends think I'm stupid? It's always this outward fear that I'm going to get judged. Well, you have to have the confidence to where that judgment doesn't bother you. And then I think that's the key. Is, is not worrying about what other people think. That way you're being authentically you, you're saying what you feel, and I think people are drawn to that, that authenticity. I mean, my podcast is one of the top in the nation, and uh, dropping bombs, by the way, yes. for all you poker fanatics. It's mainly for entrepreneurs, really. It's because we talk about sales, business, but it's, I get all kinds of people on there. Um, but ultimately, I don't care whether people are listening or not. Of course, we want them to. We want to have a popular podcast, but I don't care if, if, if no one's listening. Uh, number one, it gives me the ability to get content, right? This is content for you. Now, building a personal brand, which is important for everybody, is really what it's all about. So when you build a personal brand, what do you have to do? Number one, you have to be you, because if you're not being you, people can see through it. You, you don't get as popular, et cetera, et cetera. But once you realize, well, I need to be me. Well, what do you do every day? Where are you going? Who are you talking to? That's you, right? So just film it. You know, and a, and a, and a podcast is an excellent opportunity to sit down, have a conversation, learn some new information, make relationships. You know how many relationships I've made just because they want it on my podcast? 
You know how many deals I've made because the people were on my podcast? Yeah, can't imagine. See, you're on my podcast. Look, we're going to be doing NFTs. We're going to be doing business. I guarantee it all yeah. because of the podcast. If I didn't have that podcast, you wouldn't know who I was. I did know who you were, but yes. Well, I, you knew who me. How'd you know me? Social media. The mutual friends. And I think Dan Fleshman uh, was, I said, I've seen you on some stuff. Yeah, you looked me up. Yeah. I wasn't there. I'm telling you guys, yeah. get yourself a personal brand. Quit worrying about what everybody thinks. Get out there. Put yourself out there. More people are worried about the hate, so they never find the love. You see what I'm saying? I knew I could make it. You know, at the end of the day, there's choices in our life. And that's what is going to determine quality of your life. So if, if somebody wants to just keep shit simple, dude, look at the choices you're making. The choices you make determine the road you take. If you look back at anybody and you had a crystal ball, like take some of these celebrities that end up homeless and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Go, go look at their life through a crystal ball. You, you, you'll be able to point out the choices they made that, that led to that. Right. Like, you know, hey, hey, remember this time where you were about ready to head home, but you decided to go out and get drunk with your friends? Yeah. And remember when your friends said, you know, you shouldn't drive and you decided, you know, I'm not really that drunk, so you decided to drive. And then on the way home, you crashed, killed someone, now you're in prison. And now you wonder why you're in prison. Well, right. you made bad choices. If you would have decided to go home, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to drive. I'm going to call an Uber. Like the choices you make create everything. The, and, and what people don't understand is we are in charge of our choices. So we are responsible for our condition. And so once somebody really grasps what I just said, they realize, dude, you are the reason your life is the way it is, good or bad. Yeah. And if, and if it's bad, all you have to do is realize it's, I'm responsible. So how do you change it? I just told you, you want to change what you're getting, change what you're doing, change what you're doing. You got to change what you believe. How do you change what you believe? There's no other way to do it. There's only one way to change your beliefs and that is to get new information. So just every day from now on, get your ass up and seek new information before you go to bed. So every day you become more knowledgeable. And yeah, it might take 10 years, but so what? No one said it's overnight. The question is, is you're going to go 10 years regardless. You want to go 10 years and be in the same boat you're in now? Like, dude, that would be stupid. Just yeah. like losing weight. You know, people are like, you know, I don't want to work out for a year just to look like, you know, look great. Well, dude, it's going to be a year from now, no matter what. 